Hello everyone and welcome back. We have a fun one for you today. Nice young gal came in with significant swelling from the tooth. As you can see, number four has that decay approximating the nerve inside there. It didn't really look that bad, all things considered, as far as the PA. And then when you look at the cone beam, similar situation. Doesn't really look that bad. Maybe a little inflammation in the sinus. However, look at this right here. The buccal plate is completely gone. And when that happens, there's going to be a lot more swelling because it's right next to there. So as soon as those bacteria start to divide, because they're dividing so actively, it can actually cause that swelling. Um, and you will see eventually it would form a sinus tract, but in her case, she was in enough pain that she sought out treatment immediately. So using the flat disc to take it out of the bite so you don't have to worry about fracture. That's what it looks like after the caries. I like to connect these, these two areas together just in case you want to remove and unroof everything. And you can see that loveliness coming out of there. I'm always looking to see how much drainage we're going to get because in a case like this with the acute apical abscess where they have a large amount of swelling, you really want to get as much drainage as possible so that it allows her immune system to take over. Um, she had started antibiotics the day previous, so they had, didn't have enough time to kick in. And you can see the microsuction really isn't doing it there. Someone had asked how we do the working length here, so I just wanted to show you. As we're going down, eventually I get to the full zero, 00. I back it up to make sure that we're exactly where I want it to be. Come in with the locking forceps and either locking it or using that. And there's my stopper, there's my length with the ruler as well. Now I'm gonna do a little bit larger here. I did use an F1 because that F1 is a really nice shape that matches up with my ASI microsuction. And so I can hook it in there and get a pr almost perfect seal so that there's a lot of pressure. I call this the poor man's gentle wave. <laughs> and it, it does tend to work pretty well here, but you'll see even with all that, we're really not getting that drainage like I'd want. The We'll go through the entire rinsing here and really there's not much coming up from the tooth itself. And this could be because the pressure is more concentrated outside. It's not straight in the long axis with the tooth. And so having it out there, really, you can see that that's not pus. That's just bubbles from the Triton. So not really pleased with how much we're getting out of here. One final thing you can always try is if you take a paper point long, sometimes that almost pops it and you get a lot of drainage out of there. And you can see my paper points there, they're really, I mean, they're not even that, they're definitely nasty, but it's not what you would think. So for sure, going to two-step this one. I two-step all of these uh, AAA cases and uh, the sponge, <laughs> we're working with a new assistant. So that was a little bit too big of a sponge. So we're going to do a little bit smaller one here <laughs> and then just go ahead and put the cavit on top of there. And that's pretty much it as far as our temporary. I do like to push down a little bit farther on here and the cavit almost acts like a plunger and pushes that calcium hydroxide into the infection that tends to induce an inflammatory response that helps the area heal up and ideally should help lessen the risk of a cyst ideally all right here's the moment we've all been waiting for that's the swelling going with a 15 blade and <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll just be silent for that beauty look at that so that's why she was having so much pain in there and just ha have to do that again in slow-mo for everybody this is going to be definitely 18 and over on youtube i'm pretty sure um and when you do this, you want to kind of just, the first thing is pop it, like go in with that 15 blade. You can use a 12, whatever you have around. Um, go ahead and pop it. And that initial one is going to get most of the drainage. And you can still see there is some pus coming out of there. So I'm going in and just making it slightly larger. Uh, I forgot to get a video when she came back for the next one, but it heals up beautifully, especially on a young patient like this. You really don't have much risk of scarring or anything. Go in and rinse it out with some sterile saline or sterile water. Just get that nice and clean. And then you want to leave this open. Uh, so going in here and putting that gauze. As far as the recommendations here, um, you want to change that gauze 30 minutes after, and that's it. The reason why is it's just going to absorb any pus or blood or anything that may come inside there. You need to avoid crunchy foods, so no nuts, chips, or rice, anything that could get stuck inside that area. And then you also want to tell the patient why you're not going to suture it closed. You actually want to leave it open. Sometimes I'll talk to them about it being anaerobic, things like that. All right, here we are coming back, um, looking great. She's feeling fantastic, so much easier to get her numb. She was in a great mood this time because she, she said it hurt for probably a day or two after, and then she was back to normal. So uh, going in here, removing everything. And this patient, um, I ended up not doing the restorative for. This dentist prefers that I send it back to him uh, with just cotton and cavit or a sponge and cavit. So 
one thing I like to do in these cases is I leave and do more of an idealized access and leave the cavity. There's no reason to remove all the cavity here because it's just going to get removed anyway by the dentist when they go back to do the crown on top of there. So one trick you can do if you're seeing the patient back, even if you are doing the restorative, I like to leave the cavity in this area because it makes a much better barrier for any rinsing of the nastiness inside there. So final rinse and you can see those paper points are bone dry. Very, very happy with that. So going in with the AH plus and then doing the squirt technique as usual. Now, the reason I'm not too concerned about the squirt technique here is I really only took it to an F1. There wasn't a lot of pressure anyway outside the apex of the tooth, so I'm not worried about pushing too much out the end. Um, I'm not really going to use the pac mac here because of that, but it's a good size and you can fill this up and it, it's very predictable in this case. That F1, if you're trying to learn how to do the squirt technique, an F1 is a very good shape to start on. The small ones are definitely harder and anything bigger than an F1, you just run the risk of blowing out the apex. Um, I'm pretty much if I go larger than F1, I end up using a cone. So that's what it looks like. You can see a little lateral exit there in the check film. Here's what the final gutta percha looked like. And then here is what the final actual root canal looked like as well. You can see almost two canals there where they come together. That's why I like to take that workhorse and brush between them. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Everyone loves a good Dr. Pimple Popper-esque one. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will talk to you next time.